So in this video, I want to provide you with an example of how optimization problems work. And what you're going to see is that we're going to apply everything that we've learned so far in as much as how to find critical values and to test those critical values to see where maximums and minimums occur. And then there'll be one piece at the end that we'll talk about and kind of reason through, but by the end of next week or by the time that we cover L'Hopital's rule, we'll know how to actually find those limits and you'll be able to do the entire problem completely. So in this problem, we're given that we have a 1125 cubic foot open topped rectangular tank with a square base of x feet on a side and y feet deep. And it's to be built with its top flush with the ground to catch runoff water. And the costs associated with the tank involve not only the materials from which the tank is to be made, but also an evacuation, uh, I'm sorry, excavation charge proportional to the product XY. So that's a bunch of information. And what they've done is they've, they've given us the cost function, so we don't have to develop that ourselves. So the cost function is C is equal to 5 times the quantity X squared plus 4XY plus 10XY. And they're asking us what value of X and Y, what are the values of X and Y, that will minimize our costs. So they've given us a function. We'll call this our cost function. And they've asked us to minimize that function. Okay, so that's fine. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw a picture. So we're drawing a picture of this box. And we know that the box has a volume of 1,125 cubic feet. And they said that it had a base that was square. So you notice I put the X's on the base and the height of the box is Y. And there's no top on a box because rainwater would come into the box and would collect the rainwater. So we have two separate equations here. We have the equation x squared times y, which is a volume of the box. That's the area of the base times the height. That's 1125 cubic feet. And that's what we're going to call the constraint equation. That's what's going to say, you know, we've got to maximize or minimize something, but we have some handcuffs on what we're doing. So we're constrained by the fact that the box that we design, we need to minimize the cost of that box, but we also have to make sure that that box can actually hold 1,125 cubic feet of water in this case. And then we have this equation that we need to maximize or minimize in all these problems. In this particular case, this is the equation that we need to minimize. And that equation is the cost function for making this box, and that's the 5 times x squared plus 4xy plus 10xy, and that's the equation to be optimized. So in general, you're going to always have a constraint equation, and you'll have something to be optimized. Now, in some problems, you won't need the constraint equation. That won't be there. But in a general optimization problem, you have those two equations. Okay, so what's going to be our strategy? Well, we're going to use the constraint equation to replace one of the variables. And then we'll get a function of just one variable, because if you notice, and I've just written it right here for us to see again, that we've got the cost function here. And this cost function is a function of an x and a y. So we're going to need to do something to get rid of that. Um, and that's going to come from the constraint equation. And then we'll be ready to optimize. And when we go to optimize, we're just going to find critical values and use a second derivative test. So the first thing is I'm taking that cost equation. I'm multiplying through and collecting like terms. I've simplified that to the cost is equal to um, 5x squared plus 30xy. That's just by multiplying the 5 through and then collecting like terms. Now, I've got the constraint equation that says that x squared y, which was a volume of the box, is equal to 1125. So I'm just going to solve for one of the variables. I'm going to solve for y, and I know that y is equal to 1125x squared. So whenever I get done with the problem and I figure out what the x is, it's going to minimize the cost. I'll come back to this equation, plug that x value in, and that's going to give me the y that's going to be the other, um, you know, um, dimension of our box. So I substitute in the y. So I've got the cost is now just a function of x, and I'm emphasizing that on the left-hand side here. And that's equal to 5x squared plus 30x times 11 25 over x squared. So I just substituted that in. I'm just going to collect and simplify. And when I do that, I get 5x squared plus 33,750 over x. 
And so since the X is a side of the box, so we can start thinking about what are the constraints on X. So we know that that can't be any smaller than zero because it's actually a physical box. And boxes can't have sides that are negative. So I know that the smallest that that X could be would be zero. And of course, the largest it could be would be inf infinite in size, right? That's possible. But if you think about it, if you had a box and the X was infinite, and then the Y would be very, very small, infinitely small. So that's not going to be optimal. And the other case would be as X got close to zero, then you'd have the X, you have a very, very tiny square at the bottom and a very, very um, long and skinny box. So that wouldn't be optimal. So it should be somewhere in between. And we'll kind of talk about that at the end, reason out, but we know it can't be zero. We know it can't be infinity. So we're really looking for the critical value and that value should be tested and that should be the minimum. So I've got the box here again. And now I need to just, you know, I've got my function. It's 5x squared plus 33,750 over x. The x value has got to be somewhere between 0 and infinity. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the critical values. Second thing I'm going to do is use the second derivative test to find the location of the extrema. And then the third thing I'm going to do is if there's an, a closed interval in these problems in general, then I would take the critical values and plug in the endpoints. Um, in our case, it's an open interval, so I'll do some analysis, um, some thinking through what would happen as I got close to zero, I got close to infinity. And I'll include that analysis to see where the optimal um, X value will be. OK, so now we get ready to get started with the portion of the problem, it's very similar to what we've been doing, right? So I have the function, I need to take its derivative, so I'm going to carefully do that. And I've got f prime, uh, c prime, I'm sorry, of x is 10x minus 33,750 over x squared. One thing that you should remember, you start to catch on, is that always whenever you have um, something like this, where you have, um, a constant divided by a function, you always rewrite the function. You never do the quotient rule because that's not efficient. But whenever we have something that is a constant over x, just remember the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. And if you just do that enough, you'll kind of get it. But if you write that as x to the minus 1, you'll get what I got there. So I've got the derivative. Now, because I'm trying to find the critical values, I need to figure out where the derivative is um, 0 and where it is undefined. So I'm going to need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to do some algebra and I get 10x cubed minus 33,750 over x squared. I need to set that equal to zero. And we know that a ratio is equal to zero only when the numerator is equal to zero. So I take that numerator 10x cubed minus 33,750, set that equal to zero. Divide by 10, I get x cubed is 3,375. And when I take the square root of that, I get that x is equal to 15 feet. So there is my critical value. Um, x is equal to 15 feet. So I remember that c prime is undefined. Well, if we look here, it's when the denominator is zero. So that would be when the x squared was equal to zero. But I can't use zero anyway, right? Because zero is a dimension. So that, if it were critical value, would be thrown out. Um, and it would be um, unallowable as well because x equals zero, if you look back up here, in the green where we have the cost function, x equals zero is not in the domain of the function. So x equals zero can't be a critical value and it couldn't be a place where I had extrema. So I'm throwing that out and that leaves me with the only critical value, as I said, of 15 feet. Okay. So now I'm going to use that second derivative test to categorize my um, critical value. And if you remember, the second derivative test says if you take the second derivative, plug in a critical value, and that's greater than zero, that's a place where your function is concave up, and therefore you have a local minimum there. If you take the second derivative at a critical value and that is less than zero, that's where your function is concave down, which means you have a local maximum there. And if you were to take the second derivative of, at a critical value and you got zero, you'd have to use another test. And that's where we go back and use that first derivative. In our case, I've got the first derivative there. And I'm going to take it in that form because it'll be easier to differentiate. And then I can use algebra to simplify. I take the second derivative. And just remember over here in this term, 
as I said before, that's a constant over x squared. So I write that as x to the minus 2. And when I do that, I get the second derivative is 10 plus 2 times 33,750 over x cubed, which turns out to be 10 plus 67,500 over x cubed. And I'm just going to leave it that way. And I'm scroll up in a minute. And we'll talk about it. But when I'm taking the second derivative, and I plug in a critical value. I don't need to know what the actual value is. I just need to know if it's positive or negative. So I'm not going to do anything else to that because I've got enough information, I think. Clearly, 10 is going to be positive. And if I add to that 67,500 divided by x cubed, if the term that's being cubed is positive, then the second derivative is positive. If the term that's being cubed is negative, then the entire second derivative is negative. So I'm going to plug in my critical value, 15 into the second derivative, and I'll get 10 plus 67,500 over 15 cubed. I don't know what that number is. don't care. I just know it's positive. So it's greater than zero. And then that tells me that I have a local minimum, at least at x equals 15. So that's what the second derivative test tells me. And then I'm just going to reason through, of course, I can't have x equals zero. But of course, if x goes to infinity, it's the same type of problem. I get a very skinny or very you know, short um, box that can't hold much. So I'm not going to um, worry about that. That's going to be thrown out. And we will know very soon in, in the next few class periods, we'll know how to actually evaluate that. And you'll come to the same conclusion. So I know that x is equal to 15 feet. I'll go back to that equation that says y is equal to 1100 and 25 over, um, over x squared. So it's 1125 over 15 squared, which is five feet. So the dimensions that would optimize or minimize in this particular case, the cost for building this box that's going to hold um, 1125 cubic feet of water would be 15 feet in the x and five feet in the y. And so this is a perfect example of how you would do optimization problems.